in valiant Hibernian buoyancies from that broth of a boy, oh, Mr. Pat Money! I'm here at last. <laughs> yes, I'm looking gorgeous, you know that. My wife, what a sense of humor she's got. I said to her this morning, I said, what would you like for your birthday, love? You know what she said? A widow's pension. <laughs> I got home last Sunday morning, on Sunday night, I was out with the boys, I had a few pints, and I got home late for my lunch. I said to her, is my lunch still warm? He says, it should be. It's been in the back of the fire for the last few hours. <laughs> Murphy and Casey came over here to England and started their own building contractors, called themselves Murphy and Casey. And they were doing no business at all. And Murphy said to Casey, I think we'll change our name to an English name. We call ourselves Lambert and Lamberts. So they're in the office one day and the phone rang and one of them lifted the phone. And the boy said, can I speak to Mr. Lambert, please? And Murphy says, which one do you want, Murphy or Casey? <laughs> Irish fella, because I'm from Ireland, and, <coughs> and you never know, will you? <laughs> he bought this small holding, and he went to a poultry farmer, and he says, sir, I just bought a small holding, but I have a thousand day old chicks. The poultry farmer says, of course you can't, sir, and he sells them the thousand day old chicks, and he's back the next day. He says, could I have another thousand day old chick, please, sir? But he says, of course you can, it's great business for me, this, and he's back the next day. He says, could I have another thousand day old chicks? The poultry farmer says, excuse me, sir. He didn't say you only have a small holding. Oh, he says, so I have, sir. Do you think I'm planting them too close together? <laughs> the two lads were on the bus the other day, and they're sitting on the bus, and the conductor says, Patrick Street, James Street, Riley Street, Owen Street, Julia Street, Catherine Street, Blair Street, Kevin Street. One of the boys says, don't you think it's about time you were getting off? His little fellow says, sit down, what's your name's called? Good day, good day. Morphy brought his, he brought his dog into the park, and they all, it was all frozen over with the bad weather. It was frozen solid on the lake. And he turns around to the park ranger, he says, if I put a pair of ice skates on my dog, will it be all right for me to skate on your lake? And the park ranger says, well, it depends if it's thick enough. Oh, he says, it's thick enough, it's an Irish wolf <laughs> back here, I must tell you this. This Irish fellow applied for a job as a butler come handyman on a stately home in England, you see, and he's doing everything, looking after the horses and the dogs and everything else, and the lord of the manor was going away for the weekend to the badminton horse trials, and he says, Paddy, I'm going to leave you in charge of the stately home and give me a full report when I come back. And he comes back in a few days, and Paddy meets him at the gate, he says, how's everything all right, Patrick? Well, sir, I've got a bit of bad news for you, sir. Rover's dead. He says, Robert, he says, Robert was as fit as a fiddle when I left. Oh, he says, don't blame the poor dog, sir. Dobbin the horse kicked him to death, sir, in the stable. He says, Dobbin is the most peaceful animal in the stable. What made him do that? Oh, he says, he sir, don't blame poor Dobbin. It was the panic when the barn went in fire. All the sparks and the flames made him start panicking, you see. And he kicked out of poor Rover. He says, the sparks and the flames, what happened in the barn? He says, well, sir, it was when the barn went alight. It was the sparks coming over from the main house, landed on the roof of the barn, you see. He says, what flames in the main house? He says, well, so see, it was that stupid chambermaid upstairs, sir. She was dusting around your mother's coffin and knocked one of the candlesticks over. <laughs> he says, he says, what's happened to me, poor mother? <laughs> oh, see, it was a shock of your father dropping down outside the stable. <laughs> good news for me. He said, yes, sir, your daffodils are out. <laughs> oh, it's a great joy for me to add a letter from Ireland today as well, from my mother. It's nice getting letters from Ireland. Nobody ever opens them for you. And terrible spell of my mother. She says, dear Pat, Look how she spells dear. D E A R. <laughs> Your granddaughter is 
22. The first thing he does in the morning is read the newspapers in bed. He looks at the death, and if his name isn't in it, he gets up. <laughs> he said to me this morning, isn't it funny how all these people die in alphabetical order? <laughs> Your uncle Burke has had a suspended sentence. The woman. <laughs> Your uncle Barney went into a temporary hospital today to be sterilized, and they boiled them for three and a half hours. <laughs> We've just moved into a new cottage, and it's got no chimney. We have to carry the smoke out in buckets. <laughs> Thank you.